Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous winter day here in the end times in paradise in St. Croix, Virgin Islands. We have made it to Friday, December 25th, 2015. We have arrived at the, I don't know, is this the single biggest clueless moron day of the year? I believe that qualifies on many on many fronts. So while the rest of the planet is digging through their, well, depending on where you live on the planet, either digging through your garbage heap or digging through your garbage heap uh, under your little Christmas tree that you bought from the goddamn Optimus Club, looking for your drone your smartphone and your big screen TV coming from Santa I'm gonna be doing what I do every Friday just another day in the life of a doomsday prophet and environmental alarmist and that's bringing you my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where I share with you my emails from Center for Biological Diversity and MongaBay.com who've been going around the planet the last week uh, while Santa's been <laughs> making his list <coughs> and checking it twice. Center for Biological Diversity and MongaBay <coughs> surf surfing the planet to see how the planet has been heading directly into a brick wall at 23,000 miles an hour. And here's just a few of the ways we'll start out this week with Endangered Earth from Center for Bi Biological Diversity, which starts out with this interview with this New Yorker cartoonist named Tom Toro. <clears throat> and this is his knee slapping. This is New York New Yorker cartoonist Tom Toro's comment on the state of the planet uh, Christmas 2015. <clears throat> Quote, My greatest concern is that unchecked population growth and depletion of the Earth's natural resources will lead to a desolate planet where all the wonder and mystery and diversity of nature has been erased and there is no place left to step off the concrete and stand in all of all creation. I cannot imagine a worse home for our species than one in which we live alone. Had a couple of rants on loneliness in the end times that I have put on in the past 24 hours. All right, I'm just gonna pick and choose some of these. Well, here's some good news for Christmas. Long Beach, California runs out of time on its offshore fracking permits. We celebrate the news this week that the city of Long Beach, California has run out of time to use its 13 permits issued by state oil officials for offshore fracking in California waters. There you go. From uh, that one to take action to get neurotoxins out of our food. There you go. Talking about organophosphates in our foods. Uh, organophosphates, if you don't recognize them, well they have been used as nerve agents in chemical warfare and have been linked to Gulf War 
syndrome. Yes, this recent study find from uh, UC found that 87% of umbilical cord blood samples had detectable levels of organophosphate. There you go. And the EPA getting ready to green light these for another 15 years. Mm -hmm. So we better take some action. <clears throat> All right, more good news here on Christmas. Congress passes ban on microbeads in beauty products. <clears throat> of course, th this ban phasing out the manufacturer of these little uh, planet-eating little things to make your face beautiful for the end times. Uh, the manufacturer will be phased out in 18 months and the sale in two and a half years. <coughs> there you go. Uh, what's going on in the lawsuit department this week? This is their newest lawsuit filed to save the Coastal Martin, the Coastal Pine Martin, I guess. So what's killing the Coastal Martin? Gee, take a wild guess. How about it is gravely imperiled by logging, <clears throat> wildfires, climate change, rodenticides by these goddamn pot farmers in Northern California. There you go. All right. Now, guys, I... The second take action help ban fracking in our national parks. Uh, you know, I was just doing a rant. I've done many rants about oil drilling in Yasuni National Park in Ecuador and uh, you know ramping up oil drilling in Virunga National Park in Sub-Saharan Africa and now they're opening up uh, Britain's National Parks to fracking and, and I keep saying it's only a matter of time before they start fracking in, in this country's national parks and, and I'm unclear from reading this whether they're already fracking in our national parks. They're calling, they're very, very careful to word, use the word national park unit. Oil and gas drilling in our national parks? It's not right. Yes, but right now, at least 42 U.S. national park units are being drilled for oil and gas or are at risk for future extraction including via fracking and some of these uh, i mean the big cypress national preserve and everglades national park in florida they're getting ready to uh go underwater anyway so i guess we might as well frack them before they go underwater glen canyon the Grand Tetons? What? I'm not at all surprised about the Big Thicket National Preserve in Texas. And the National Park Service is updating the rules governing oil and gas extraction in our national park units for f the f those fossil fuels that are not owned by the federal government. So this is these planet eaters who own the mineral rights. And we're not talking national forest here, guys. We're talking national parks. Anyway, moving along from, from that to, I have mentioned this one, Greenland ice melt has doubled in speed. And of course, uh, Greenland, as I've mentioned, this week cheering on 
the doubling of the ice melt so they can start growing potatoes and exporting the fertilizer being uncovered uh, by the retreating glaciers. That is how Greenland is responding to the news. Okay, but let's see what mangabay.com is up to this week. I'm actually gonna gonna start with the the very last one. This is uh, the very last story in their rant. Uh, is is this latest story about this this mining disaster down there? Uh, one of Brazil's worst environmental crimes brings into question brings into question whether Brazil's environmental policies are influenced by large mining companies. <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, the way that's worded, I, I got to bring it out, guys. Warning, warning, alert. I mean, the bullshit here, is, is, there, is there any question by anyone with a brain on this planet whether that goddamn planet-eating bitch Dilma Rousseff uh, is or is not directly in the pocket of these huge uh, international uh, mining conglomerates, most of them uh, coming out of China. Uh, make no mistake about it where this one is. And this is... Uh, this is based on Brazil's own Secretary of the Environment. These planet eaters named called Samarco had already been fined six times for breaking environmental laws before the accident. Fined six times. Uh, and in the case of this disaster, there was no alarm alerting neighbors of the danger and no contingency plan to clean the thing up. And of course now the Brazilian government is uh, fining these planet eaters 5.2 billion dollars. Uh, Anyway, uh, moving on, moving on. How does the global commodity collapse impact forest conservation? Since, er since early 2014, prices for most commodities produced in the tropics have plunged and uh, curbing investment uh, in them, uh, pushing procedures to scale back on mining and drilling and all this and postponing plans for expansion. All of this sounds like good news. In isolation, these developments would seem to be good news for tropical forest, but the reality is far more complex. And I have to admit, I was one of these clueless morons uh, d just making the assumption that this collapse in commodities prices, uh, hallelujah, uh, putting these goddamn planet eaters out of business, including the frackers right here in the U.S. But when you start digging a little deeper, I, I can't get into this whole story right now. I might do a whole rant about it. Uh, guess what? If you think for one minute that the collapse of commodity prices are saving tropical forest. Uh, these these tropical conservationists have one thing to tell you. The the planet eaters, you know, I, I guess uh, it's just the planet nibblers are taking over anyway. 
Moving on. Well, here's some great news. Finally, Belize bans offshore oil drilling along barrier reef system. So they're still ramping up offshore oil drilling off the coast of Belize, but at least they're keeping their goddamn uh, drilling rigs out of the UNESCO World Heritage Site called the Belize Barrier Reef. And, uh, but of course, if they have an oil spill outside the reef, what, what do they think? Okay, here's a reef with no oil drillers. Here, next to the reef, is an oil well. We have a blowout next door to an offshore marine protected area. And anyway, D, 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 D. When is tree cutting deforestation? Palm oil companies set their own definition. And this is looking at this absolute unadulterated horseshit uh, about sustainable palm oil and, and how all of these goddamn planet eaters are, uh, you know, calling themselves sustainable palm oil producers acting like a, a palm oil forest, I guess, is a forest. Uh, anyway, guys, this, this is just the latest. Uh, anybody on this planet at this point thinking there is such thing as sustainable bomb oil. Got one thing to tell you. Sustainable palm oil. Anyway, let's see what else we have. Back to the Brazilian Amazon, looking at the Belo Monte Dam. I haven't stopped to look at the, what is going on with the Belo Monte Dam right now. Brazil's government charged with ethnocide in building of Amazon Dam. Ethnocide. Brazil's federal public ministry has found the Brazilian federal government and the Norte Energia company guilty of ethnocide for the social and cultural destruction wrought on seven indigenous groups during the Belo, Man Belo Monte Dam's construction. The MPF is demanding that Brazilian courts set up an external commission to prevent future harm, even as the Brazilian government is granted an operational license for the dam whose reservoirs are now filling. There you go. All right. From the Belo Monte Dam to a little bit north uh, for, this is for fans of, uh-oh, Garrett Hardin fans, Tragedy of the Commons. Uh, creating a commons, sustainable fishing and hunting in the Colombian Amazon. So what they're looking at is these these where local communities have created these jointly managed common properties uh, out of what had been an open access resource where there were no rules where many fishermen were pulling out as many fish as they could to sell in local mar markets. So now they've created a commons 
to fix this. I think uh, they should read The Tragedy of the Commons by Garrett Hardin for a doomsday prophet peek into where that idea is going to go. Okay. From that horseshit to this story. China's demand for rosewood is destroying forest in Southeast Asia and now increasingly in Africa. Yep, the majority of rosewood imports into China traditionally have come from Southeast Asia, but in 2014, when imports to China were at an all-time high, nearly half came from Nigeria, Ghana, and other African countries. What a surprise. Then we have uh, Manga Bay's spin on the U.S. government uh, making it harder to import lion trophies. We can thank Cecil the Lion for that law. Cecil, you did not die in vain. Here we go. Indonesian forestry giants ready new peat protection projects. Palm oil giant, Golden Agri Resources will rehabilitate about a 6,000 acre peatland in Indonesia that burned during the recent fire disaster. Anyway, and I'm, and I'm going to move on from that. Let's see, what is going on with Guatemalan Christmas trees? Guatemala's Christmas season is not nice to the native pinabete tree. Yep, as the uh, pinabete forest has shrunk from 200 74 square miles in 1979 to 96 square miles of Pinabete forest left in, uh, in Guatemala. Yes, what a surprise. D, 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 D. A couple of stories on drones saving the planet. Here we go. Guys, I can't make this shit up right here on Christmas Day. An unconventional trinity. Conservation, religion, and evolution. Okay. The National Park Service largely owes its existence to one of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of the Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints, otherwise known as the Mormon Church, a clear example of how religion and conservation, belief and science, though they might seem like strange bedfellows, have led directly to Earth stewardship in our time. And then, of course, they want to clarify, this post is a commentary. The views expressed are those of the author alone. Yes, the author alone. Yes, here is how hackathons are saving the planet. Oh, here's my old friend. I know this uh, personally. Large-scale copper mine project in Ecuador mired in allegations of 
abuse. Yes, uh, this is this uh, Mirador copper mine, this, this massive uh, uh, planet-eating project in Ecuador near where I live for, for two years being, uh, you know, fully supported by Rafael Correa and the strategies of the Correa government supporting the mining company by military force, arrests, lawsuits, harassment, and lack of prior informed consent, and have also been used by the Ecuadorian government before in conflicts with other multinational mining agreements. Yes, it has. Uh, anyway, it looks like I'm good lord, am I already hitting 30 minutes? I could uh, go on here. Let's just let's just end up in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, there's no better place to uh, end any romp around a collapsing planet on Christmas Day than in sub-Saharan Africa. This would be Angola. This is an article on planet nibbling, planet nibbling in sub-Saharan Africa. Big increase in little farms is whittling away Angola's woodlands. Dry tropical forests cover more than half of sub-Saharan Africa and are home to many people who live below the poverty line and depend on these forests for their livelihoods. And in Angola, and everywhere else, I no doubt, islands of dry woodlands, of dense woodland, are being cultivated much faster than the surrounding open woodland because they offer better soil. As with more people moving into the regions, cultivation rates more than quintupled between 2000 and 2013, 2013, researchers worry some areas may be reaching a tipping point, past which soil and habitat could become severely compromised if farming continues apace. Farming is not going to continue apace. It's going to continue to quintuple as the uh, population of sub-Saharan Africa quintuples. But anyway, I need to wrap up this uh, Christmas Day Ecological Meltdown Roundup Rant 2015 because I got to get ready for not one, but two Christmas dinners. So this is your old Doomsday Prophet. Merry Christmas. Bye, guys.